Greetings, this is Timothy Youngs, the Digital Apothecary, and today I'm going to be talking about Livongo. So, for many of you probably, you hopefully have heard about Livongo. It's basically a digital health company that has really, I think, captured a lot of people's fancy in terms of what can digital health do for chronic disease management. And if you're not aware of it, uh, Livongo has declared that they're going to be launching an IPO within the next week. And I think that's going to lead to very amazing things because I think if you've been watching digital health space, there hasn't been a lot of IPOs as of yet. Um, and it's kind of been like a down amount recently. And I'm hoping it picks up. But Livongo, I think, is going to be one of those ones for 2019 that's really going to shine for us to say, hey, you know, let's take digital health seriously. These are standalone businesses. But, okay, let's suppose you don't know all this about Livongo. Uh, let's go with, this is still relatively new to you. So let's talk about Livongo. And I think it's going to be kind of cool. So, you know, if you want to go to your website, livongo.com, um, I'll have a link below. And basically... Um, you know, they, their front page, I think, could use some work because you just look at this, it's kind of hard to follow. Like, what is this? It's only down here that you really see. It's basically a, a digital healthcare platform that uses wearable devices, uh, Internet of Things devices, um, some AI that they say, but it's more like smart algorithms as far as I'm concerned these days. But um, the really cool thing, though, is their digital platform is leading to some clinical benefits. And this is one of the few companies I know of that I'm really watching right now that's this far ahead that actually has good clinical evidence to support it. And you know, a lot of this has been published in the past, I would say six months, and I think it's leading up to this fact that they wanna launch an IPO. Um, but what they do is they partner with uh, payers and different insurances and, you know, for example, like Beast, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield is backing them or uses them as a service. And what they do is basically, like you can see this picture here, you get like this thing mailed at home. It's a Bluetooth um, blood pressure cuff, uh, Bluetooth weight scale. Um, there's a self-monitored blood glucose device and they all integrate with the mobile device and they collect the information and they send it on. And this information goes out and then people can use it. Um, what it does, though, is it sends little nudges to the person about, okay, this is how your health is. So, like, you have hypertension or you have diabetes. Um, these are things that you can do to basically uh, collect this data, putting from the patient, and using and tracking what should the patient be achieving, giving little nudges with their health, with their medication adherence, to help them get to where they need to for their care or to a desirable outcome. So... You know, on their website, they're saying that they're um, seeing a drop in A1C, um, that they're actually demonstrating uh, cost reductions. There's a lot of organizations that are actually backing these uh, this as well, and they're really in a lot of health plans. So it's big. Um, they actually put, I think, out a report before their uh, for their IPO about how they're doing. They seem to have a lot of customers. They've been growing year to year, so I think it's fairly promising. Um, so... You know, you, you can dig through this if you want to watch like the, just a little bit snapshots of what they're saying that it does. But again, as far as I'm concerned, I look at this and I think this is a good example. Um, you basically have the patient or their member, as they call it, and you're basically taking data, which is all these little signals. You're collecting objective health information from like the devices and such, also from what they're saying to you. And you're interpreting it, and this is where I think they're using their back end and what they'll call their AI and such uh, to basically then intervene with a patient using coaching or the device or some nudges to basically then see what other outcomes you get, which is basically the signals again. So hopefully someone has diabetes and you're trying to help them eat healthier, be more active and such, um, measuring their blood glucose, uh, if they're taking their medication, you should see a downward trend. And if you're not, it's still trend still high or moderate, you know that you need to intervene more. Maybe you need to get a human coach there to help out and such. Um, in terms of its impact, I mean, this is stuff they're putting out there. So if you really want to get down and look at these case studies, go for it. But and they have some good posters out there. But let's jump into, let's say, um, you know, what is the actual evidence? So if you actually go to clinicaltrials.gov and you start looking here, you'll see that there's actually um, three studies they have listed. One is completed. Uh, two that were interesting to me is that they're doing something with Insulia. So if you're not familiar with Insulia, it's a digital therapeutics that's uh, with Volantis. It basically helps out with dosing of insulin. So this is quite interesting that they're going to, you know, if we go back, let's, let's do this. Let's go back to this um, to this image. 
So what if you added on digital therapeutics here? What if instead we could say this application and applying actually could not only just say, we're going to give you coaching on how to live healthier and such and what to do to manage your disease, but we are also going to tell you how to dose your, your, your uh, medication, how much insulin to be giving and how to dose adjust it. Because Insulina, if you go look at their research, and I'll talk about them in a different video coming up, because I'm going to go through all these digital health companies in time, uh, has shown that it can also drop A1C. So that that to me is very in interesting. They're adding that on because to me, you know, Livongo isn't the only platform here. We have Omada Health, uh, we have Verda, we have a bunch of other ones out there. The biggest limitations is what they really rely on is the fact that they're going for some kind of behavioral nudge to have a patient change their health. And a lot of the research I've been reading from Livongo and others, what it looks like is you reach this peak level, like maybe 80% of your clients and below doing these healthy nudges, doing this coaching can achieve some kind of clinical outcome. Uh, maybe a drop in blood pressure to a target range, drop in A1C to a target range, but there's those that will not. And why? The reality is no matter what you do probably for those patients in terms of trying to make them more adhere, right probably do everything they can for their health, they probably need more therapy. And the thing is, if you look at this platform the way it is, this is nothing in here about you know talking to a clinician. There's nothing in here about this data being used for remote prescribing and such. That's not really the program. Um, it can work with those other things, but it's not really like, um, you know, it's not like there's uh, a prescriber in here is prescribing and everybody monitoring it. So it's not like there's a, uh, nur a nurse practitioner, NP, uh, or a PA or a physician that's actually part of this thing. Oh, look at this data and then we should do this. this. Um, it's not there. But, you know, with digital therapies, you can actually tie that into this. And that's really what, you know, if, if we're talking like Volantis and Cilia, you can actually say, well, here's your target SMBGs, here's how much insulin, here's how much you have to dose to get to those along with that. And now we, I think we're getting into this like magic area. So I'm very interested to see where this goes. Um, there's a, as a pilot, I think it, whatever it comes up with is going to be very interesting. So... <clears throat> Going beyond that then, uh, if you go on PubMed, you type in Livongo, you get a bunch of weird stuff. One thing that actually stood out to me was the fact that I think the 2000, yeah, 2017 National Standards for Diabetes Self-Management Education Support, actually there's a person for Livongo on this thing. I didn't even know that until I started looking into this a few months back. Um, but they have a number of publications out. And if you want to see my personal thoughts, I do have an article out here, uh, Livongo Research and Review, or what Livongo success may mean for digital health and chronic disease management. I wrote this back in May, um, even before, uh, because when, um, when there was words that uh, this could be turning into an IPO, uh, and now it is, so I was kind of curious about what it's going to look like. So this, if you want to go for a deeper dive into my own personal thoughts at the time, it's there. But I also highlight some of the research coming out because back then the ACC um, annual meeting was going on and they actually had an article, um, a small poster I think they put out about uh, remote monitoring of blood pressure and type 2 diabetes populations. Um, but I think their diabetes focused research was actually a lot bigger and that's what they were really going for. So you can see um, these are some publications if you want to go into and see and read about. The one I think that got a lot of attention recently, and this was done with Eli Lilly, which I thought was really cool. So you could take like Sanofi, Eli Lilly, um, Novo Nordis, these guys are all playing in the diabetes space. So obviously they're probably all looking at like companies like Amada Health and like uh, Livongo seeing what they're going to do. But bottom line is if you look at the study, what you start finding out is the fact that um, Livongo was actually reducing cost. Um, which is a big deal because, well, if you want the payers to back a digital health company, you're going to have to show some kind of ROI. And the ultimate thing is healthcare costs money. Reducing costs is always in their interest. So if you can do a health intervention that is accessible to almost everyone remotely, um, that logistically makes sense and you can just plug into a patient home and doesn't need a lot of hands-on activity to drive to a clinical endpoint that's very desirable for a payer, it almost is a no-brainer. So, you know, I'm looking at this and I think this is a very promising thing. I think this is something that, um, you know, there's is going to be some big things that come out of this. Uh, you know, one thing that comes up to me, also those are pharmacists, is, you know, pharmacists have always been trying to proposition themselves as health coaches. 
I honestly think with stuff like this coming out, it's going to be very, very difficult at the end of the day. Um, I do see a gap in terms of where coaching can achieve a clinical endpoint before you actually need to do more medical care. In that gray area, I wonder if you know we could have pharmacists uh, intervene on chronic disease management uh, through RPM to revolt, um, treatment and such. And I've talked about this in the past with like blood pressure because if you look at the American uh, Medical Association remote patient monitoring platform for digital health that they were talking about, it's all based off of studies that have been done with pharmacists doing RPM for hypertension management. We can do it. Um, I'd be very curious to see if that ever gets built into something like this in the end. But as I said, the big difference is not having clinicians on staff to provide direct patient care really cuts down your overhead at the end of the day. And being able to use whatever algorithms they got on or anything else that are kind of building to do these behavioral nudges I think is really key. So Livago in terms of chronic disease management, hypertension, diabetes make the most sense. These are two most pressing issues for cardiometabolic syndromes in the United States. Is this going to expand to other things at the end of the day? Um, I don't know, you're going to go f- for cholesterol stuff and things? Probably, I mean, that already fits in. There's other diseases to really tackle. I, I think, I don't really see like psych being a big thing for them. I think other players are going to be in a space. I think other wellness uh, conditions aren't too huge for them. I think they're really going to try mastering the cardiometabolic space as this wellness platform um, that is using these coaches to basically live healthier lives at the end of the day. And I really am curious to see how well they take off here in the next few years. And along with that, the big eye should probably be on if you're an investor, if you're anyone else looking at the space, is you know, where do the other competitors go? If Livago continues to take off and catch a lot of market, that's going to put these other companies kind of at a very much possibly disadvantage to play, you know, catch up. Um, but maybe there's is some space here to figure out, you know, is Livago's platform the NLB all? Is there an evolution in terms of what else can come out? You know, the one thing I look out here is the technology that's being inter- um, integrated. I'd like to see if this ends up being expanded further. You know, glucose monitoring for me is kind of a big thing that I think is going to undergo some continuous evolutions here with continuous glucose monitoring devices such as Abbott's um, Freestyle Libre, for instance, that attaches to the arm, but also you have considerations like Dexcom and things like that that are coming to the market. Um, Blood pressure monitoring, you know, or, you know, Bluetooth cuff, you know, I have one here, for instance, that you have to put on. How many times a day do you have to do? Are we going to go to continuous monitoring? And if that happens, you know, these kind of things are based off intermittent data collected throughout the day. What if you have continuous monitoring throughout the day? What does that end up doing? And how would that really influence all this altogether? That I'm very curious about. That's going to be something that's like the next evolution of all this. So, Anyway, this is Timothy on the Digital Apothecary talking about Livongo. And, you know, feel free to leave any comments or thoughts. If you know anything else I should look into, let me know in the comments below. I'll also have some more dis- uh, in the description, some other links to go out here. And if you want to see for those websites, some of the studies, and for what I've written about in the past, feel free. Take care and have a good day.